What is up guys? Bones88 back again. Today I have an awesome awesome video. We're gonna do top 10 non-legendary slash premium characters. So that means anything that's achieved through legendary events or anyone who's a premium battle pass character or anyone that is locked in a store like Battlegrounds. So tunes like Zara, Kiri, Garrett, uh, they're all locked behind either a battle pass or a battlegrounds store and that to me will be would be premium so i don't want to make this video too long we already have a lot to go over so we're going to shoot through these characters real quick in my top 10 list so let's do it all right so number 10 Raval. to me he's not the greatest character maybe a c c plus character but he works great with a pride you could probably plug and play him in some place some areas i mean he's not a plug and play character but his aoe is really good if you put enough attack on it and it has if he has enough power behind it he can really hit hard with his aoe there's not much to say about him because honestly you won't use him a lot but as you find most of the characters you use are all legendaries or tournament store or something like that that are harder to farm if you take revel to gear 11 he'll help you tremendously in the buff event so I'm definitely not against taking him to gear 11. As you see, I have him at 10 and maxed out. If you think you can beat the buff event, then I would only take him to 10. I honestly would only just put the least amount you can into him. So that's Revel. So number nine on the list, Xantara. Xantara is a great demon. She helps out a lot. She's a good healer. She has this kind of a heal thing where it takes away her health as she gives health to, to the rest of the team. I'm not a, honestly a fan of that, and so because of that, I kind of are standoffish with her. But as far as free to play, she, you can find her in Rage of Clans and the Demon Invasion campaign nodes. She's she's a good healer though. Don't get me wrong. Don't let me put you off of her. She can still do a lot. She has a little bit of damage there too. A little squishy, but she's still worth the farm. So if you're able to farm her. I say go right ahead and she'll help out your demon team, especially in the beginning to mid game tier. I also would suggest taking her to gear 11. I've just had a lot more characters that I'm invested in right now or she would be at gear 11 for me. And with that being said, that's Zantara. All right, number eight, we have the human healer, Selena. Selena can be found on a node in the Rage of Clans. Although I have not got to use her on my main, on my actual account, she is a great human healer. She has a little bit of RNG to her, but that shouldn't turn you off. She still is really fun to play with. I play with her on my test account, and she's a really great character and definitely worth uh, farming when you gain access to her. And she can also help you get more doom in the human event. So let's take a look at her healing abilities. They're, they're pretty good, actually. So her passive ability, she can copy two random buffs from the enemy, and at the end of the turn, she applies them to random enemies for the same duration. So if, if the other team has a bunch of buffs, I believe that she can copy two of those and put them on on your other team every turn. I'm not sure about that because I don't play with her a lot, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's saying. She also has another good move here. Amos's Mirror. Heals all allies by 400% of Selena's magic damage. If allies are afflicted by debuffs, she applies two random opposite buffs for the same duration. So you're going to keep those debuffs, but whatever that buff is that's opposite of that, she's going to throw on that character that you choose to heal. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's a pretty cool mechanic. She's really fun to work with. And here she can heal the targeted ally by 280% of Selena's magic damage and an extra 20% of her maximum health. So she does a lot of healing. She's putting a lot of buffs on the team and doing a lot of healing. Um, obviously, you want to put a lot of damage on her because that's that affects her healing overall and the buff she puts on and everything else. So, Selena, you can't go wrong putting her to gear 11. I know I haven't here, but trust me, I play with her in the test account, and she's she's a great healer. A lot of people are turned off by her because of her random her randomness, and I think she'll she'll put taunts maybe on people you don't want her to. So that's something to kind of be wary of. But besides that, everything else is pretty cool. She's going to help you a lot in Battlegrounds also, so I just suggest working on her. So that's about it for Selena. Alright, number 7. We have the one and only Freezard. I love this character. 
He looks really cool. He's been around since day one. He at once was one of the best characters in the game. Not so much anymore, but don't let him fool you. He's pretty squishy, but once you kill him, he can come back again, and that's pretty cool. But the thing you got to watch out for him is he has two AoE attacks, and they, they can do some damage. If he's modded right and everything else, he can wipe your team out pretty quickly. And this one's also an AoE. It deals 220% of magic damage to three enemies. So sorry, not your whole team on this one, but three enemies. And it has a 50% 50, 50 chance to inflict an armor decrease for two turns. So you can say, you do this one first. I think this happens first, but if you do the second one here first and then hit him with that, dude, they're gone. And this applies slow, 75% of the time. So that's also good. Slow is a good thing to have. So he's a really cool character, can do some damage on AoE. He'll help you a lot for the Mordoom event. I think he's awesome. I took him to gear 11 as soon as I could. Don't use him as much now I'm in the end game and all these other characters are coming out, but still, he's going to be a, a, a lot of use for you in your Battlegrounds team. Eventually, you're going to want to have two human teams whenever we get like a better leader or something. You're going to want to end up having two teams for each one of your races, and I'm telling you, he'll be a big staple in one of them. You can't go wrong with Freeze Arm. So with that being said, that's about all I have to say about him. Let's move on to the next. All right, number six. The third human in a row on my list. So, this human, she is crazy. She's really good. This is the one ability that makes her awesome. Her clone ability. Well, what they call on here, reflections. So what she does is she summons a reflection of the target enemy. And she they only get a percentage, it says here, 70% of health and shields, 70% damage, and 75% speed. But what, what they're saying is, if she can target one of the enemies on the team, and she can create a mirror image of it and put it on your team. So let's say Tromgar's over there. You can use that move, and they're gonna, she's going to make a copy of Tromgar and stick him over on there. And say you're going against a great team. Say you get, you're going against Buff or you know, Mordoom or just Thelane or anybody. If you can get it off in time, you can copy Thelane. You can copy Buff. You can, even if you don't have Buff, you can copy your own Buff over to your, your team. I mean, I don't know if you'll last long enough to get to that point, but... She is like the biggest help when it comes to the more doom event. You can create copies of them and use those enemies against the actual computer. And she is just a lifesaver when it comes to the more doom event. She is still probably one of the better characters in the game. You cannot go wrong farming her. I recommend her so much. She's a lot of fun, but not much more I can say about Cruel. Great human. I strongly suggest her. Okay, finally, moving away from the humans. Number five, we have Slinger. Slinger being the second demon on the list, he is awesome. He is going to be one of the main components at unlocking Murdoch, the goblin legendary. He is a great demon. Like, I still use Slinger in my buff team right now, and I'm at, like, top 25. Go all in on this guy. As soon as you get his node unlocked, get him. I think he's in demon invasions. I'm not sure how many knows. I think it's just one. But when you get there, farm the heck out of this guy. Great leader. Here, let's read his leadership. All allied demons gain 20% of their maximum health. Every time an ally suffers a critical hit, all allies recover 5% of their turn meter. Allied demons recover twice this amount. So if you put him, if you put him as leader and it's all demons, they're all recovering 10% of turn meter every time they get critically hit. But still, even if you don't have demons, they're, they're still getting that benefit of turn meter. So he's a great just overall leader. He's one of the best. And for a while, he was meta. His leadership was meta before Buff came and I think the lane. They were all meta. But at one point, this is the guy you wanted. Cannot describe enough how great he is. Um, he has a good AoE. Uh, this move here attacks one person, but it does a lot of damage. Um, this, his basic takes turn meter. Yeah, a 50% chance to decrease the target's turn meter by 10%. So he's decreasing turn meter. You know, he's gaining buffs, giving, giving turn meter, giving health. Great, great leader. One of the best characters still in the game. Because even without his leadership, he's a great demon companion to have in your team. One of the best demons. Can't say enough about him. But with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Alright, number four. We have the elf, Nidiel. Nidiel is not the best elf on the in the elf faction, but she's the best 
free-to-play option that you have. She can be your leader in the elf event, and she has amazing synergy with Solius. Solius is kind of dying down, but those two together are the, one of the two best pairs in the whole game. They both attack whenever Solius attacks, and they just have a lot of synergy together, and they're both, as a pair, are awesome. Also, her leadership and some other things have just been reworked last week, so a lot has changed with her, but she's only better. And she synergizes with a few other, Aphelia and Illyria and Singeo, and it has made her a lot better overall. Most likely, you will have to use her for the elf event to unlock Ember. So as soon as you uh, get her node unlocked, which I think is in Dawn of Order and Rage of Clans, so she's really farmable. And once you get there, take her up to gear 11. You're going to use her a lot, especially if you're beginning. You can't go wrong. She's great. She'll help you in many, many ways. And she'll make you a lot better in Battlegrounds now with the rework. Her leadership's a lot better. And most likely, you're going to have some of the lower-end elves. And she brings those lower-end elves up and kind of makes the second elf team with the lane, the legendary, being the main elf leader you want. So she's not the best. She's not the best elf leader, but she definitely is going to help you out in the early game. You can't go wrong. She's great in a human team. You're going to use her for a second team in Battlegrounds. This is a great move. This will help you in a lot of things. Deals 420% of magic damage to me, and then it inflicts ability block for two turns. That's huge. Ability block is one of the best debuffs you can give on this team. And it's very satisfactory, like she just like, gives like a blast to him and ability blocks him. I, it saved my butt a trillion times in this game. With that being said, that's about it. I strongly suggest you farm her and you, you will not be disappointed. Alright, we are down to number three. And we have my man, Dr. Frank. This guy is a G. You can't go wrong. Put him to gear 11. Put all his abilities in, take him to level 80 as soon as you can farm him. He is found in the Dawn of Order campaigns, and he is just crazy good. He's awesome with goblins. Goblins are one of the best teams that you can get in the game. Now, I would suggest you not farm and work on goblins until later on towards the end game, but still, you can get him, and I think he's pretty, pu he's pretty plug and play, honestly. He can put protection up. He gives you crazy health, gives it to everybody every time, and it is awesome. But of course you want him in a goblin lineup, but if you don't have something and you just stick him in there, he's still going to plug and play for you. On the side of almost being top 10 for me, top 10 character there is. He's totally free to play. Like I said, you can find him in the Dawn of Order campaign. He also has a shock mechanic. You know, he deals, this is an AoE, he deals damage to all the enemies, and then he inflicts shock for two turns. And when you're in a goblin team, once he hits that, get ready. Because it's going to be going downhill at that point. Can't say enough about this guy. Just go out and get him as fast as you can. Because you will not be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Frank. Number two, Kyra. I think you're starting to see a little bit of a pattern here. Humans and demon. If you want to get ahead as fast as you can in this game, go humans and then go demons. They're very free to play friendly, and they're still some of the demons are one of the 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 best teams in the game. And in order to have that really good team, that really good demon team, get my girl Kyrie right here. Crazy good. I use her. I've used her since day one, and I use her still today in my meta team, my meta buff team. She is awesome, awesome dude. She's everything. Everything she does is awesome. So start with this. She applies invisibility to all healers and tacticians and fighters for two turns. She applies counteract to all allied defenders for two turns. Restores 25% of the turn meter to all allies. If Venomate is on the battlefield, he gains haste for two turns. She has some synergy with Venomate, but that's not why she's good. In a nutshell, what this move does is she turns everyone invisible and then puts it on a tank. So it's pretty much a taunt without her being a, a tank. She's putting taunt on a tank without them having to use taunt. I know that sounds kind of stupid, but it's very helpful. Also, whenever you have minions, they also will be used as a tank with her. That's why she's really cool. You put more doom in with her, you, you throw out his minions, and then you put that invisibility move on, and the, the minions will act as tanks. And pretty much, you know, 
the the team's wasting all their abilities on the minions, and that's amazing to to do. So so you have this AOE where she has a 30% chance to daze the enemy for two turns if the ability de deals damage. So it's not always landing, but if you put some potency on her, she lands it a lot. And that daze, it, she's throwing it out to everybody, so everyone has a chance to get daze. And that is so helpful. Days is crazy helpful. I can't describe how good that move is. And then on her basic, she has a 50% chance to inflict an ability block for two turns. So you want to give her a bunch of potency. And if you do that, she's just putting ability blocks and dazes and taunts on people. And she's just a great utility. And she's still one of the, the, the best characters in the game. She's free to play. You can get her in the... Dawn of Order and the Rage of Clans nodes, and she's really easy to get, and pretty quickly too as you start out the game. If you haven't farmed her yet, then you better get on it now, because I cannot suggest getting her as quick as you can, get her to gear 11, max her out, and you will not be disappointed. So if you haven't, go out and get my girl Kyra. Next up. Alright, here he is. Number one, baby. This man deserves it more than anybody in the game. He's been here since day one, and he's been holding it down since. Still to this day, one of the best tanks. By far. Ask my man Zeri. He just came out with the top ten champions video, and he he was one of the top ones. He still thinks he's good. I still think he's great. Don't judge my screen here by what you should do with him. He should be gear 11, especially if you're beginning out. You can't get a better tank. He doesn't have to be with orcs to do good. He's good with every single team. Total plug and play. He can he can taunt, and then when people hit him, he can counteract. And a lot of the times, if you put potency on him, he will stun when he counteracts. So there might be a team where he's taunting, and every person's going and hitting him, and he, he'll counterattack back and stun. There's been a few times, not a lot, where I've had a whole team stunned just because he's sitting there counteracting and stunning everybody. That alone is crazy. That's good. No one else can really do that. Maybe like one or two others, but there's not very many. Just awesome. Still to this day is usable. Whenever I have someone left over my battlegrounds and I need a tank, he's the main guy I throw in there. I save him for later on because he's that good. Not only can you get him free through achievements by at first when you're playing the game, just doing it, just playing the game, you know, completing achievements he's rewarded to you and eventually you can just get him to seven star without farming him at all but if you want to speed up the process a little bit you can find him in rage of clans you can find him in demon invasion so he's really farmable you just have to get farther down in the campaigns um i once again another one i can't say enough about if you don't have him maxed out if you don't have him farmed go get him i haven't put much into him because once i beat the solace event i kind of quit working on the orcs every month a new character keeps coming out and i just keep working towards them and as the game progresses more and more characters come out and i just have had a hard time coming back and gear leveling him but i totally suggest going all out on this guy especially for beginners especially for mid game players even for in game players battlegrounds really changes things up when it comes to roster development you're going to want as many characters, even good or bad, to gear 11 because they're going to help you in the end defeat your opponent. But that's about all I have to say about Tromgar. And that's your number one non-legendary premium character. All these characters I strongly suggest going for for free to play. Towards the end of the game, things are going to change. You're going to know the, the game a little bit better. And you may not want to get one or the other. But if you want to farm the best characters without going farming them in the tournament store and you just want to get the best bang for your buck, these 10 characters I strongly suggest. All right, guys, that's my top 10 non-legendary slash premium characters. If you disagree, if you didn't like my list, or I forgot somebody, let me know. Comment down below. Feel free to tell me if you disagree or if you agree. If you liked what I said, let me know, guys. I love to discuss it. I'll discuss down below on YouTube. Come join my Discord. Join XMG's Discord. Come let me know, man. Top 10s are my favorite. I'm always asking people, what do you think about this character? Or who's your favorite character? If you could do this, what character would you use? Any of that kind of stuff, guys. Come by. Come by the Discord. Show some love. And let's have some conversations about Dragon Champs. This is my favorite game. If you guys have any questions at all in any aspect of the game, please come by Discord or comment below and let me know.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. It supports me. It supports the XMG fam and all other fans around the world. So I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.